If you change your mind, you change your life, just change your mind. The Lord loves you. He's standing with his arms wide open for you. Oh, oh, oh. Be encouraged, cause this day's for you. Don't you let this opportunity pass by you. morning. Thank you so much for tuning in this Sunday morning to Changing Your Mind Ministries, where we teach life. Come get yours. I'm happy that you're coming to get your life. Hey, we're going to be on air for the next 45 minutes. So I need for you to park it. Go ahead and minimize your distractions. Get your tea, get your coffee, get your breakfast. If you're folding up clothes, put that laundry basket beside you and let's go ahead and get into it because I truly believe that God is going to give us what we need right now to live our best life. Who am I? You should know that, shouldn't you? I am April Evans, and I'm excited to be your teacher. I'm excited to be a student. I'm excited to be a learner. I'm excited that God chooses to use me to, to share with you what he's been sharing with me throughout the week. And this year, uh, we've been talking about this year, 2021, being the year of restoration, revival, and reversal. We are embracing that, and through the teaching, through the bridge, which is our Sunday school class, we've been learning how can I partner with God to make sure that this really does turn out to be a year of restoration for me and revival and reversal. So we've been getting God's word and applying it to our lives, his principles, applying it to our lives so that we can truly embrace this year as being a year of restoration, revival, and reversal. So guys... I want to take an opportunity to say thank you so much for tuning in over the past five to six weeks. We've been having a great time breaking down this theme. Um, in addition to that, we've been honoring some amazing women within the ministry of Changing Your Mind Ministries because this is Women's History Month. We're honoring the amazing women within our ministry who are making an impact and contribute at a high level to our world, to their worlds. And this week, no different. You see who I'm honoring today? You see that, don't you? What? We are honoring this morning, Changing Your Mind Leadership Academy's Principal Director, Minister Todd Clark. woo -hoo! Go ahead and put her name in the comments. Give her a shout out. Put those emojis in there, smiley faces, hearts, confetti, party, you know, all that other good stuff. We are honoring Minister Todd Clark on today. Director Todd Principal Tot, whatever you want to call her. She has a lot of titles, but she just likes to be called Tot. So we're going to honor her on today because the Holy Spirit said to honor her. So that's what we're going to honor today. Yes, she is my BFF. I guess I love her to life. Yes, we are thicker than thieves, but the Holy Spirit said to honor her because he said that honor is due to her. So let me tell you a little bit about Tot. Tot, uh, she helped to launch launch, I'm sorry, not lunch. She helped to launch CYMLA in the summer of 2016. And under her, the vision of our Leadership Academy, Changing Your Mind Ministries Leadership Academy, is to build more leaders through the development of young minds, bodies, and souls, as well as cultivate a desire to teach others to do the same. Under her leadership, CYMLA offers a non-school days program, summer enrichment program, and an after-school program. And right now, we're currently we're currently offering a virtual e-learning program that provides a nurturing, safe environment for the success of our students and the parents. And up under uh, her leadership oh, since 2016. Let me give you a little bit, let me give you not a little bit, but let me give you some facts about the success of what her leadership has brought to the academy. Student focus, our babies, our children, our generation of now, the students focus and class participation has increased. Grades continue to go up for the students that continue to stay and enroll in our program. Not only that, those students who some have labeled as unruly and disruptive, because of her leadership and because of the leadership of her staff, her team members that work alongside her, because they 
one, give them love. They give them responsibility. They hold them accountable uh, to the potential that's in them. Um, and because of the way that they structure them, structure this and give them attention, those students who were considered unruly or disruptive, their behavior has totally changed. But what's impressive is that students who come to CYMLA struggling and um, in their academics, struggling as a leader um, in, in school, because of the support of Tot and her team, total 180 degree turnaround. Parents can tell you, teachers can tell you, she's partnered even with the teachers. She's partnered with the schools. The schools call her to say, I think we may have someone that may need to participate in your program. That is awesome. Where a school recommends uh, children to be a part of your success. So through under her leadership, and again, under the leadership of Todd, we have picked up from as many as 10 schools in the past and definitely even more than that. But we picked up on places such as North Franklin Head Start, Northwest Crescent, Rutherford Road Head Start, Cherrydale Elementary, Stone Academy, A.J. Wittenberg, East North Street, Sterling Academy, Sarah Collins, Montevue Elementary, Paris Elementary, Severe Middle, and Mitchell Road Elementary. Guys, that's just a short list of schools that we have partnered with currently and partnered with in the past um, so that our students, so that our babies, our children, our children um, can, so that we can build these moral leaders and so that we can make sure that we accomplish our goal of relationships, leaderships, and academics. So Todd, I absolutely salute you. I applaud you for your leadership and for being a history maker in Women's History Month. Congratulations, congratulations. Changing Your Mind Ministries this year, 2021, Again, we've been talking about this year. We are embracing our theme of the year of restoration, revival, and reversal. And we've been partnering together over the past six weeks to talk about, okay, how can I partner with God to make sure that I see some areas in my life restored, renew, revive, see some things replaced. We've been talking about those things and we're gonna continue in that same vein this week. So whatever distractions you might have, cancel them. Bring those clothes to the side of you. We're going to fold them up. Get you, Go ahead and get your breakfast, get your coffee, get your tea, and let's get ready. I want to say to rumble, but let's get ready to get into this word. Let us pray, guys. Father God, I thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity to share with, with our listeners the things that you have been teaching me. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the clarity that your word brings. I thank you for the for the life that your word gives me, how it refreshes and nourishes me. God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that continues to empower me in this place. Holy Spirit, draw souls unto you on today. Save souls on today, God. Those people that don't have a relationship with you or questioning if they have a relationship with you, Holy Spirit, I pray that you begin drawing them even now. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for this opportunity to teach, God. And I thank you, God, that in this place, you meet me here. So from my mouth, God, to their ears, give us all what we need. And I thank you in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. I get really excited, guys, over this time. And I'll be trying my best not to cry, but it's hard. It is absolutely hard. But we're going to get started. Over the past oh, maybe five to six weeks, we've been talking about the first part of our of our theme, which is this is the year of restoration. And we talked about the word restoration and we defined what that means. What does it mean to restore? You know, I love your comments. You know, I love it when you talk back to me. So go ahead and put that in the comments so I can make sure that we're all on the same page. I need to make sure that you're picking up what I'm putting down. So what does it mean to restore? I'll let you have at it. And while you're putting it in the comments, let me remind you that God is a God of restoration. God is a God of restoration. So we talked about that in week number one. Week number two, we talked about renew. What does it mean to renew? We, and we talked about it uh, meaning that to help us to regain the inner strength that we need to pursue God. God renew God, make new again my strength, my inner strength. 
my mind, my will, and my emotions. God, renew those parts of me to, um, to have the strength to pursue you like I should. Renew. That's what it means to renew. And we said in our restoration process, in the restoring process in week two, we said God does four things, the four R's. I know you see two hands, but you see four fingers. Ha. Huh? So renew. God is going to renew, replace, revive, and return. In the restoration process, God is going to renew, replace, revive, and return. But guess what? I want to fast forward to what we talked about last week. We talked about God is restored. The great news is God is restoring visions and dreams. And my throat is already starting to, uh, I'm already starting to get a little teary out about it because I'm telling you, I have some, I've had some dreams that I thought that I tried to kill because I thought that God could not restore those dreams. But God is able, God is a God of restoration. And as I teach this, he continues to remind me that April, I can restore that. If it is a God-given dream, God-given vision, God can restore that because he is a God of restoration. So last week we talked about God being, oh, and I have my tissue. Oh, I'm real ready today, cocked and loaded. Right. And I'm going to pause right here because I just had, I just heard the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about this year being the year of restoration. And we've been breaking down the word restore and the word renew. So I have to ask you, what are you believing God to restore for you? I know I've been the one talking every single week and the Holy Spirit has me slowing this all the way down. I believe I was getting way too ahead of myself. I was allowing the excitement to take me somewhere that he probably didn't want me to be just yet, just yet. But I've been talking to you every single week for the past six weeks. And I believe I've been giving you some good teaching because it's been good to me and it's been Bible based. But now let's make this personal because this is your time. You've invested, you've set aside 45 minutes to be with us, to be with me. So let's make sure you get everything out of it that you need to get out of it. So just calm down for a moment and talk to me, okay? Just talk to me. Tell me this. What is it that you need God to restore for you? Let's make this personal. You don't have to type it in the comments. But I need for you to really sit down and think versus just coming in receiving. And you're, and you're receiving good word. Give something back. Talk to God. Partner with him during this time. During this time, partner with God. Talk to him now. Talk to the Holy Spirit now. I don't, I don't, I want you to get everything that you need out of these next 45 minutes. So, so slow down for me in your mind, okay? Here's my question. Here's his question. What do you need for God to restore for you? What, what dream? What, what vision? What is it? What is it that you think you lost that you think you can't get back? I feel that. What is it that you did, You probably didn't lose, but you put it down willingly? You willingly put it down. Maybe you were tired. Maybe you were exhausted. Maybe you were disappointed in yourself. Maybe you were. And maybe you think you can't get it back. Well, what is that? What is it that you're too afraid to ask God for? Why are you so scared? Why don't you believe? Yeah, why don't you believe? It's not that you're scared. Why is it that you don't believe? What do you need for God to restore? What do you need for God to renew? Maybe it's as simple as God restore me. Maybe it's not a dream. Maybe it's not even a vision. Maybe it's just God restore me, the person. God restore my spirit. God restore my soul. He restores my soul. What is it? You identified it? Good. It's good stuff. And I'm talking to the Holy Spirit right now as I'm saying this to you. 
I'm going to tell you something. Restoration has nothing to do with you. It doesn't have anything to do with you. Restoration is who God is. Okay? Restoration is who God is. So no matter where you are in your life, you can still allow God to be a restorer. Even his word says that what? Your latter will be greater than the former. God's word says that. So God, that simply means that God is committed to helping you fix whatever is broken. God is committed to that. Do you believe that? That the restoration has nothing, has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with who God is. Oh, we're going to get that. We're going to get that today. And I'm talking to myself. We're going to get that today. So no matter where you are in your life, I don't care what's going on around you or even inside of you. You can still, you have the power of choice to still allow God to be a restorer. You do. Hmm. Because God is committing to helping you fix whatever has been broken. Whatever has been broken, God is committed to it, to helping you fix it. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Do we have the eyes to see it? Last week, we talked about having the right vision. God restoring our sight, our ability to see. God restoring our vision. Because having the right vision, having the ability to see right, gives you staying power when life isn't going right. And seeing right, me, seeing right also helps with, because they say seeing is believing which is true. If you can see it, if I can conceive it, if I can see it, you know, I can be it. That is very true. Seeing is not just believing. See, uh, seeing is also receiving, receiving. You cannot receive, we, you and April, cannot receive what you cannot perceive or have a vision for. Because we can't see everything with our natural eyes. We can't. You can't see your future with your natural eyes. You can't even see the you that God created with your natural eyes. You can't even see the real you with with your natural eyes. You have to be able to see it with your spiritual eyes. Or as we talked about last week, the eyes of our hearts. The eyes of our hearts. Remember, restoration is who God is. The Holy Spirit is just jacking my whole lesson up. And I won't even say jacking it up because it's not a negative. But I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to take full control. And I'm hearing him and I'm trying to be mindful of every single step he's having me to take this morning. This class is for you, so get what you need. I'm not just teaching this class just because for for my health. I'm not just teaching this class to get some type of notoriety. And and when I'm not teaching, I don't just show up just to make sure that I'm I'm seen as being on, on, on live with you guys or just to make sure that I'm accounted for for that Sunday. No, this is my life. The decisions I have made up to this point have created my life. And because I need help with my thinking, I need help with my decision making, I'm tuning in because I need to get my instructions from God because what I believe comes by what I hear. And I want what I hear to be by the word of God. So that's why I tune in. That's why when I teach, I go and take my own notes. Because I too need to be restored. There's some things that I've been fearful to ask God of. There's some things I refuse to even ask God about because I didn't feel deserving to be restored. I felt like I had messed things up way too much or way too many times to ask God to restore me. 
I didn't even have faith in my own repentance. I kept saying, April, you know you're going to do that again, so don't even ask. Don't even ask God to restore you because you've already plotted out what you're going to do tomorrow. You've already plotted out what you're going to do after worship. You've already plotted out what you, you still had that on your agenda and you know God wants you to turn away from that. That's why I sit here. That's why I teach. That's why I listen to the teachers of CYM because I want what I hear to come by the word of God because my faith, what I believe comes by what I hear. And I need to hear instructions other than what I'm telling myself because my best thinking has got me in the worst of places. And I'm talking to me right now. I'm looking in the camera, but I'm talking to me. We're going to get this year of restoration. I can't wait another, I can't wait another six months to get it. Okay. I can't y'all. So last week, We talked about blind Bartimaeus and it should have been blind April. We talked about blind April last week and Jesus asked blind April, what can I do for you? Or in other words, do you want to become well? In 2016, yeah, because I take notes. In 2016, Pastor Jones taught us that restoration always begins with admission, confession. When I can finally say, excuse me, when I can finally say I did it, when I can finally say I need, when I can finally say I need help, when I can finally say rescue me, when I can finally say it's me, oh God, restoration always begins with admission. And any man that can admit he's wrong, any man that can admit he's broken, any man, any woman that can admit, admit I need to be repaired has the ability to be made right. If you can admit, God, I need to be restored. God, I need to be repaired. God, I've been too scared to ask you for restoration in this area. God, I've been too reluctant, too stubborn to ask to be renewed in this area. God, I've had too much pride, whatever it may be. Any man or any woman, any young lady, any young man that can admit he or she is wrong, broken, has the ability to be made right. So in Mark, the 10th chapter, 51st verse, Jesus asked blind Bartimaeus, do you want to become well? What can I do what can I do? What do you want me to do for you? Blind Bartimaeus said, I want to, I want to see. I want to see. And as I put it last week, if you're not asking God to help you to see, if blind Bartimaeus had not asked Christ to help him to see, it would have been like blind Bartimaeus asking Jesus, to fix his walking stick. Doesn't even make logical sense, does it? But let me tell you this, go back to what I said, any man that can admit he's broken has the ability to be made right. <clears throat> Your brokenness, my brokenness, we'll just talk about April. My brokenness is so profound. Sometimes my brokenness is so deep. Sometimes my brokenness is so painful that my response to Jesus' question of what do you want me to do for you? My response most times when I'm in that broken place that's so profound and so deep and so low and so painful, sometimes my response is often nothing. Just you can't help me do nothing because I'm so stuck and waddling in my own personal disappointment. My own struggle with life, my disappointment, my personal setbacks, um, my disappointment is with myself, not just not with other people, but my own personal disappointment with myself. It might seem like an odd conversation to begin to talk about restoration and to begin to talk about hope. Especially when I'm even especially when I'm admitting that I don't even want restoration because I don't feel like I deserve it. 
But that's exactly the point. Restoration, whatever it may be for you, is never abstract. I wrote this down. Whew. It is always specific. Restoration is always concrete. Restoration is always particular. That's why I asked you, that's why the Holy Spirit asked me to ask you, what is it that you need for God to restore? What is it that you need for God to renew? Because re restoration, renewal, is never just something just far off, something gray. It is always concrete. It is always specific. It is always particular. It's always pinpointed. And even when you talk, and, what, and what's tied to restoration is hope. I get it now, God. When you get to this place of brokenness that is so profound that your response is sometimes, nah, God, I don't need you to do nothing for me. I'm, I'm just going to sit here in my disappointment. God offers, offers us hope in the face of hopelessness. God is not going to give you hope when you already have it. He's going to give you hope when things look hopeless, when you feel as though God can't restore you or you feel as though you're undeserving of restoration. Christ offers us hope in the face of hopelessness. Restoration and hope are always in spite of something. Is this in spite of nature of our lived experiences? Um, is this in spite of nature of our lived experiences shapes our understanding um, of what restoration and becoming well actually mean? <sighs> Open the eyes of my heart. We're going to go back to what we talked about last week. And I know I slowed it all the way down, but I'm just following the leading of the Holy Spirit, guys. Talk to him about it. This is a partnership today. You're going to get everything that you need out of today's class. We're going to get it together. I'm going to get what I need. It's on you to get what you need. So why open the eyes of our hearts from what we talked about last week? We're picking up from there. Ephesians 1 is where we came from, verse 17 um, all the way through 19. It says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. And this is Paul talking. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of glorious inheritance in his holy people and his, his incomparably great power for us who believe. And we talked about last week that our eyes, he said to open up the eyes of your heart so that they may be enlightened um, in order that we know the hope. Our eyes, they help us to see things. We use them to observe. So Paul says, um, I want you to be flooded with light in your inner man. I want you to be flooded with truth, with God's truth in your inner man. Open up the eyes of my heart. He said, I, this truth, meaning I want it to be revealed by God himself. Um, and then he talked about the first thing that he wants you to know is the hope of your calling. Remember, this is just a repeat of last week. We're going to get through this really quickly um, because we're building on that to get to verse 19. The hope of his calling. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he to which God has called you, has called us. Paul is saying to them that salvation is just the beginning. God saved you, yes, that is your hope and just the beginning, but there's some more great things to come. So salvation is just the beginning of a great thing. As you continue in this walk, as you continue to work out your soul salvation, you're gonna be conformed more to the image of Christ as you mature, as you apply the word. Yeah, as you allow God to prune you and shape you and mold you. Salvation, you think that's good, but that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning of your hope. So we understand that the hope of our calling is um, in life. That's what works on our behalf. That's what works for us. We understand the hope of our calling. We understand that life works for us. Hope does not work against you. Life does not work against you. Mm. 
Make sure we all get that. Okay. And we talked about the eyes of our heart. A lot of people uh, say, you know, that the eyes are the windows to our heart. And I do believe that to be true. Because that means that if you look into someone's eyes, you can sometimes tell what they're really thinking and what they're really feeling, feeling despite the words that are coming out of their mouths. And as I said last week, if you spent any time with Pastor Wendell Jones and he's looked you dead in your eyes, he's, he's listening to what you're saying. He's also looking into your eyes to see what's really going on. What are you really thinking? What are you really feeling? And that's taught me to do the same when people are talking to me. So I'm going to be looking in your eyes because I want to make sure that I'm in tune with your heart. Are there some things that you're not saying? Are some things that you're thinking and feeling that you're just not expressing? Hmm. Okay. So let's look at it another way. Uh, what if it means um, we have to believe something in our hearts first rather than understand it with our minds? A lot of times we're like, use your brain, use your brain. But what if we have to believe something in our hearts first before we get it in our minds? Well, the word of God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, <laughs> with all your mind, your will, your, with all your heart, the place where you rank and you make decisions. The heart, the place is, that place is the real you. So he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Lean not to your mind. Lean not to, to your own understanding. Wow. But trust in the Lord with all your heart. But we'll get to that in just a little bit. Okay. So the middle part of verse 18 says, um, the hope to which he has called you. We talked about hope a couple of weeks ago. And hope is where we desire uh, for something that we believe in um, is obtainable. Hope means that I believe in something and I believe that it is obtainable. But remember, when we hope, hope is not wishful thinking. Our hope is rooted in God's promises. So when I say I hope according to the word of God, that's a promise. So I am believing in something that's, that is definitely obtainable, something that is tangible for me. So I believe that it's obtainable and I believe that God's promises are true. So when I say that I hope in God or I hope in God's word or I hope in God's promises, that's saying that I believe it's obtainable. I believe that I can grasp that. I believe that I can reach that. And I believe that it's absolutely true. <sighs> okay, so then let's get down to uh, verse 19. Verse 19, he prayed that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. And the word understanding meaning heart. So let's talk about the word heart. Heart in the New Testament um, thought refers to the real you. <laughs> the real you. When we talked about authenticity and the real you, the place where you decide the values that will guide your life. Your heart is the place where you decide what values, what beliefs are going to guide your life every single day. The direction of your life flows out of your heart. Your total inner person. The direction of your life flows out of your heart. Does that make sense to everybody? So did you know, again, that your heart has eyes, that your heart um, has eyes that at any moment can be opened or closed? Because eyes, they open and close, right? But that, did you know that the eyes to your heart at any moment could be open or they could be closed? If you stumble through life making bad decisions or you continue to fall into sinful patterns, the eyes of your heart may be closed. Because we're going to go back. Well, God says what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But if we keep stumbling through life, making bad decisions or falling into sinful patterns, could the, the eyes of our heart have been closed to God? And that means that now the values that are guiding our life every single day, the direction of our life um, is being rooted from not godly instructions, but maybe our own instructions generational instructions 
instructions from people who, who don't have the mind of God. I mean, you can name several different things, but if our eyes of our heart are not open to God, they're closed to God. Get it? Okay. So there are two observations that come to mind as, as, as I began to read this and I wrote down like, God, please, you know, God, as I was praying to God to please open up the eyes of my heart, because again, going back to that's the, the decisions that I make that guide my life every single day are coming from what's in my heart. It's not coming from what's in my mind. Cause you know, you know to do right, but just because you know, it doesn't mean that you do it. You go based on what you prioritize, what you think is important. So even though I know what's right, sometimes I do what my heart wants it to do. Got it? So first, when I began, two observations came to mind when I thought about the heart, the eyes of the heart. The first thing is, is that you don't have to be this intellectual giant. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room in order to grasp God's spiritual insight or be able to grasp God's uh, spiritual instructions and absorb his truth. Because remember, he said to open up the eyes of your heart. He didn't say to open up the eyes to your understanding. So I don't have to be the smartest person in the room in order to grasp what God is trying to do and say in my life. All I have to do is be open to his instructions. I just have to have to have a tender heart that seeks after his truth. That way my, my heart can be open. And when my heart is open to what God has to say, my life will begin to look different because the direction of my life is going to flow based out of based out of what's coming out of my heart. And if I'm allowing God to be the ruler or to sit on the throne of my heart and allow him to give me the instructions, my eyes will be open and I can grasp spiritual truth about who I am, about who he is. The second thing is opening closed eyes if my eyes are closed to God, then if I want them open, I have a partnership with the Holy Spirit to be able to help me to open my eyes. I can't do it on my own. It is not up to me um, to pry open. My, you know, it, it is a partnership with me and the Holy Spirit for me to open up my eyes to God's truth and to receive his insight. The Holy Spirit is tasked with opening our eyes to our hearts. So if you're saying, you know, if you are crying out to God that you want him to open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. You know that song, I want to see you. The Holy Spirit partners with you so that your eyes, just like the eyes of your heart will be open to God's truth. So when we only see with our physical eyes, when you're only seeing what's going on in the natural, the threats that you see, the circumstances that you see, what looks like evidence you, when you continue, when you're only looking with your natural eyes, you won't be able to see what God has in store for you. You won't be able to see who God says you really are. You won't be able to see God for who he is. When, when you do not allow God to restore your vision, restore, renew your vision. And I looked up a familiar story in the Bible um, that talks about that in second Kings six. Uh, the Lord had encouraged the servant of Elisha. You guys remember that? Um, in this way, he's, the king of Syria was making war against Israel. Um, and he had a great army that was supposed to capture Elisha. And Elijah prayed and said, Elijah prayed to God and said this in, re, in regarding his servant in, in 2 Kings 6 and 17. He said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Now, remember, we're not talking about natural eyes. But remember, I just said, if we only see things with our physical eyes, if we're not allowing God to instruct our hearts, if we're not allowing God to open up the eyes of our hearts, the threats that we see in front of us, those circumstances that you see, those, those uh, you think about all the things that you think that appear to be going wrong in your life, when you feel like things are crushing down on you, when you feel like you're in a boat of despair, when you feel as though things will never go your way, when you feel as though it's always one problem right after another, the things that you see will appear as threats. They will appear, um, they will appear as surmounting problems that you can't get over. And you won't be able to see what God really has in store. So in 2 Kings, um, Elijah prayed to God. He said, God, he said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes, my servant's eyes, that he might see. 
and the servant, he had seen the physical presence of the army, um, of the threat against, you know, against he and Elijah in his, with his own eyes. And it, in his eyes, he, it seemed like it was going to be certain death for them. He thought that they were going to die because he was looking with his natural physical eyes. But God intervened and opened up the servant's eyes. And he suddenly, when God opened up his eyes, he no longer saw in the natural, he saw in the spiritual and he saw God's army. But not only did he see God's army, he saw horses, he saw chariots, he saw horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So God allowed, when God allowed the vision, God allowed the spiritual revelation so that he and so that we will get courage in the face of what seems to be impossible. God opens up our spiritual eyes so that we can see that it is more with us than is more with them. God will allow us to see that he is perfect, that his strength is perfect in our weakness when he opens up our eyes to our hearts. Uh, okay. When God opens up the eyes to our hearts, God will help you to see that there is more provision going on behind the scenes than what you can see in front of you. God has an invisible army at your disposal. God has an invisible, God has the angels that are employed, that you employ, um, that are prepared to defend his children. So yeah, we live in a physical world. Yes, we have, you know, our mind and our bodies um, and our spirit nature. But so, uh, yeah, but, but why should we be surprised you know, why should we be surprised that there isn't more to them what meets the eye? We have to be willing to see God's viewpoint, which is having spiritual eyes when we face trials, when we face things that appear impossible. So we have to ask God to restore our vision. God, this looks like it's too much for me. God, this appears as though I'm going to end up sinking in debt. God, it appears as though the situation will always be the same. But if you pray to God, God, open up the eyes to my heart. I want to see you. You will, God will open up your eyes to see the provision that he's making behind the scenes. Because sometimes we can't see more than our present circumstances. I'm guilty. Sometimes I can only see what's in front of me. And when that gets too painful, we lose heart. And when you lose heart, you close your spiritual eyes. And you stop seeing God the way you need to see God. And more importantly, you stop seeing you the way that God intends for you to see you. King David prayed to God in Psalms 119, 18. He said, open my eyes that I might that I may see wondrous things from your law. Maybe, just maybe, you and I would be wise to pray to God to open up our eyes so that we can see things in a dimension in which God sees. So maybe we just need some courage in times of attack. Maybe we don't see the invisible forces that God has already provided for us when we think that we're alone in a situation, when we think that we are alone in our circumstances, but we're not. God is a God who restores. God is a God of restoration. And he's restoring visions and he's restoring dreams. He's also restoring relationships. He wants to restore a relationship with you. And what do I mean by that? If you don't have a relationship with God, and that relationship simply means I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm not saved. I mean, I believe in God, but I don't have a relationship with him. Or I believe in God, but I've never submitted to him as him being my Lord and Savior. Well, we can take care of that today because God wants to restore you. I hope we're going to keep saying it until you get it. God wants to restore you. Remember, I said, no matter where you are in life, you can still allow God to be a restorer. No matter where you are. And God is committed to helping you fix whatever is broken. God says it starts with the relationship. So if you would like that relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, I'm offering that to you today. He's offering it to you today. I'm just saying it. So I want you to repeat after me. If that's you, we're going to make it real simple. Right where you're sitting, right where you're standing, even if you're in your car, just repeat after me. 
Father God, I thank you that you are a God who restores. God, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. It is with my heart that I believe. And it is with my mouth that I confess, that I make known, that results in my salvation. And because I've done those two things, I am saved. Holy Spirit, thank you for teaching me about me and about my God. God, thank you for your commitment to fixing what is broken in my life, starting with me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Congratulations. I'm so proud of your courage. I'm so proud of you. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, could you please email us at info at cymm.org or you can go ahead and inbox us right here on Facebook if you're tuning in through Facebook and let us know that you received Jesus, you received salvation on today because it belongs to you as yours. Let us know. We want to pray with you. We want to let you know the next steps in, in this road, this new life that you're taking, taking. And we also want to support you. You're not in this by yourself. You may not know what, what's coming up next or how to handle next or what does this mean. Come get some answers. Let us give you some answers. And if you want to be a part of our family at CYM, we would love for you to be a part of our family. Just inbox us or email us at info at cymm.org. And we would love to welcome you to the CYM family. CYM, and for those of you who've gathered around your TVs and your PDAs and your telephones or computers, Pastor Jones is coming up at 1015. And I hope that you guys tune back in at 1015 to be with him. And if this word has blessed you, and I don't want to say blessed you, I know that you've been getting a lot from this ministry. We really do believe in giving you solid teaching based on the word of God. And if our ministry has supported or helped you in any way, we would love for you to, to give to our ministry so that we can continue to bring good teaching your way. So you're more than welcome to donate. There should be a donate button right there um, to our ministry, or you can give through Cash App, dollar sign, we are CYM, or you can go to our website, cymm.org slash giving and click on that button. Until next time, CYM, until next time, those of you who gathered around to listen, I absolutely love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Until next time. <laughs>